because nothing gets done. How many people, do you know not to raise your hand, how many people have been on a project that got canceled before it was done? Everybody's been on at least one. Or we declared it was done, which just meant we were tired of it and we moved on, right? So, um, so hard decisions, without a strategy, hard decisions don't get made. Um, and again, I'm gonna go back to, I want, so I want leaders to make hard decisions about what not to do, but I also want to enable everybody to make decisions about what to do and not to do and what's more important and what to say no to. So, um, I like the quote on this slide from Jeff, again from Jeffrey Moore, inertia, right, so, so getting stuck not moving is the residue, the result of past innovation efforts. Left unmanaged, it consumes the resources required to fund next generation innovation. So we have an innovation effort, great. It, it succeeds, fantastic. Um, and then we just keep doing it, or maybe it starts to succeed, and we just keep doing it. And we don't sort of have a way to say, stop that, that's no longer useful, it's time to move to something, to, to the next thing. So when I think about what it means to execute on strategy, so he, he also says, Right, um, just allowing the current state to continue isn't strategy, it's just operations, right? We're just continuing to make the current thing work. Um, that's where I think about, um, so what we used to do at Rally, um, that I think was a, the opposite of, of just operations, is we would very intentionally, having a strategy and a true north and a place we were trying to get to every quarter we would get together and launch initiatives designed to ch Ooh. <laughs> it's okay. Initiatives designed to change the business itself. So not an initiative launch a new product, right? But an initiative that said, let's get better at the capability to release products into the marketplace. That would be the initiative. And that meant we put together marketing and sales and product development. Um, and product of sales, um, yeah, and bring all those people together and be like, wow, it seems to be really, we, we struggle to bring new things to market. What could we learn to make that go better, right? Those are the kinds of initiatives that prevented inertia, prevented us from getting stuck just doing what we'd always done. And, and really ask ourselves the question, if we're, gonna go, if we're gonna go here, if this is our goal, if this is our strategy, what about our organization prevents us from executing on that strategy, right? Um, a classic one that I've run into a lot is, you know, like we buy companies, but we don't integrate companies well. So we, can we get better at mergers and acquisitions? But really isn't about being better at mergers, it's about being better at bringing people in and, and bringing, making them part of the company, right? So that might be like an initiative, right? And that's when you're really talking about strategy, right? Um, we don't do that when we get stuck in, uh, um, Dean Leffingwell calls it the, fo the internal fog of war. So, so here's the thing about strategy. We, we, I, wanna, I want everyone in the company to be able to think strategically, but at the end of the day, it's not everyone's job to think strategically. It's the leadership's job, right? However high up that is for you. It's the leadership's team job to pick their head up above the day-to-day, -day, above the current operations, above asking what your customer wants. Your customer doesn't know, what is it, Steve Jobs? If I, or uh, the famous quote of, that's not really from Henry Ford that says, you know, if I ask the people what they wanted, they'd just say faster horses, right? So how do we pick our heads up and think beyond what our customers think? Well, that's the job of leaders, um, to take time to think big picture, to understand the market, to, to, to place bets. Right? and then help uh, enable us to do it. Well, they can't do that if they're sucked into the day-to-day -day too. Right? So what causes your leaders to be sucked into the day-to-day? -day? Right? Um, they, they, they just get more tactical. Well, it happens when you always have to go up for decisions. So now every leader's job is just to make decisions all day that other people could have made if they had the right information. Um, they are valued for solving problems instead of for teaching people to solve problems. And so they're the, pro they're the chief problem solver, which means they get sucked into the day-to-day. 
Um, or in a lot of big companies, um, the silos, right? The, the, the departments are so separated that we can't talk to each other. We have to go to a leader who talks to a leader who goes back down, right? These are the things that keep leaders stuck in the fog of war, right? And so they don't pay attention to strategic goals either. And all of a sudden, the sales leader is chasing the latest whale. The product is solving the complaints of the loudest customer, right? Everyone's reactive. Nobody's thinking strategy, and nobody's working towards a strategy, right? Um, right? So, so it gets really hard to... And, you know, the alternative, by the way, looks a little bit like uh, leaders constantly, constantly, constantly reinforcing what the strategy is, right? So come to me with a problem or a decision. Hey, should we, should we build that thing that the angry customer wants? Hmm, let's think about what our strategy is and whether that's aligned with our strategy or misaligned with our strategy, right? Think it through. That's a leader reinforcing what the strategy is, teaching problem solving, and teaching making choices based on what that strategy is, right? That's the, that's the opportunity. Um, so, um, so I said earlier, I'm not gonna tell you exactly the right way to do this, because there is no one right way. There is no one way to describe a strategy, right? Um, in fact, for any given company, it depends on your scale, your speed, what you're trying to accomplish. God, those bottles are hard to control. Um, sorry. Um, what, what your strategy should be, like, I, that's not my job. I, the key, though, is can you help people make decisions that consciously move us toward goals? Um, and so that's really what I want to describe. So it's not really what is the outcome, like what does a strategy look like, but it's more I think about how to get there. Um, this is a big piece of how I think about it, right? Three, uh, so there's a formulating of strategy. So, so this is the really scary part for a lot of companies is um, we're going to allow the leaders, whoever that is, by the way, and the leaders could be the top five people in your company or like at Rally, the leaders were the top 20% of the company. For, for varying definitions of top, we were not very hierarchical. We were pretty flat for a really long time, but we brought together the people who were official leaders and also de facto leaders. Who were the people who had followers? Who were the people who had influence? Who were the people who saw the big picture? We brought those people together and said, let's figure out what our strategy should be. And we had amazing facilitators. Um, in fact, my mentor, Jean Tabeka, literally wrote the book on how to facilitate collaboration. And she led us through many of these meetings um, in which we went in not knowing what the answer was gonna be. For those of you at bigger companies, you might, this might resonate, you might understand this. When, when we worked with, um, yeah, when, the company doesn't even exist anymore. When we worked with CA Technologies, um, we worked with one leader who admitted how scary this was. He said, I've never run a meeting that I didn't know the outcome of when we started, right? So he, had, which to his credit, he understood that he was paid to be strategic. He was paid to understand the marketplace and the opportunity and to come up with a winning strategy and to lead the company in an aligned way. And he's like, yeah, so when I have a strategy meeting with my top leaders, it's all about getting on the same page. That's how he saw it. And, and I, I don't, uh, I don't want to discount that. Like, that's what most people are taught about what leadership is. Um, but the reality is he, gave, he had the courage to allow us to come in and run a meeting in which the outcome was not predetermined and in which all the people, his leaders, his strategic thinkers, had a chance to um, bring their information, bring their knowledge, bring their thinking, disagree respectfully and with healthy conflict, and at the other side, come out with a strategy that everyone could believe in, right? Um, it was amazing. Still made him uncomfortable, but it was amazing. <laughs> um, 
And then the idea is, so having allowed the messiness, we then have to get to a place where we can articulate strategy in an aligned way that's meaningful to everybody. Um, and, uh, and, and then kind of set up an environment in which that strategy can be deployed, which by the way, mostly I do through Agile, right? Agile at every level, Agile marketing, Agile HR, Agile you know, deployment or d development, right? Um, and, and I'm not really gonna talk about the detail of that too much, except to say that the whole idea is to make the strategy so visible, and then when people plan their work, they can tie the work back to the strategy and show that relationship, right? And I'll come back to that in a moment. Um, and by the way, that might feel uncomfortable. So we made, we made fun of big company leader. Now we can make fun of small company startup chaotic. I don't want, this is what I hear in, uh, in uh, Silicon Valley. Well, I don't want to tell our people what to do. I want them to have the freedom to decide what to do. I want teams to have autonomy. I can't possibly force them to align to a strategy if they're going to have autonomy. So, yes and, if you want to accomplish something bigger than yourself and bigger than one team, if I need two teams in order to build something amazing, if I need a thousand people to work together to build an airplane or a rocket or a medical device, I was talking to someone who does medical devices, then I probably need those people to, with autonomy, choose to work together in an aligned way. So then my job becomes how do I make our, our strategy and working together in an aligned way sound compelling? Because it is compelling, because we could do something awesome if we did it together, right? Um, and so that's the challenge. Um, so one of the ways we do that is we create a shared language, right? Um, it doesn't matter what that language is in a lot of ways. This kind of goes back to what's your culture, right? What fits with your company. But if, uh, so like at Rally, we talked about True North. True North was our annual kind of our goal for the year. What are we, where are we trying to be? Who are we trying to be one year from now? That was our True North. And then we had what, what we at the time called Mother Strategies. I'm sure it came from a book. We read a lot of books. So <laughs> I forget which book that is, but that doesn't matter. True North and Mother Strategies, everyone knew what those were. And then we had rocks. Every quarter we chartered rocks. A rock was a uh, cross-departmental effort um, uh, and, uh, that would either uh, work in the business, so de delivering something to our customers, or work on the business, deliver some improvement. And the idea was that the rocks would lead to the mother strategies. That was a shared language. You can use whatever shared language works for you. But the key is, we could, I could talk to anyone in that company, from the CEO to the front desk, front desk receptionist, and, and I could have a conversation about what the rocks are this quarter. And I could have a conversation about how we were doing against our mother strategies. And we could have a conversation about work to do or not do because, well, that's not very well aligned to our mother strategy. What, should we really do that? Right? So having that kind of shared language. That's part of what I got to work on with um, Sipgate today, which was great fun. Right? It's like, you guys have a well thought out strategy. It's really exciting. A lot of work went into creating it. Um, now let's come up with 64 ways to describe it. And, and I don't mean 64 languages, but like, like all the methods of communication, verbal and written and inspirational and, and simple and complex, all the things, right? Um, but at the end of the day, let's have a shared language so we all have a shared understanding that we have a strategy that we want to align to it. Um, at, that, uh, at that insurance company I worked with, um, they talked a lot about intent. Um, or commander's intent. If everyone understands the intent of what we're trying to do, then we can move all the decision making down here. So the people with the closest to the work, closest to the customer, closest to the information, can make decisions that are aligned to our strategy because they understand our strategy. It's awesome. It's fun. It's actually fun. That's the thing. Like for those of you who are afraid of the top down thing, it's really fun to know that my work matters. Right? That was my favorite thing about working at Rally, is I always knew that I was working on something that mattered. And if I suspected that I was not working on something that mattered, I could tell somebody or change it, right? or collaborate with my coworkers to change it. <clears throat> 